You're watching ZTV. Hello, dear ones. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Z. I want to talk to you today about the power of agreement. This is going to be um, a really nice teaching, and if you are, you know, if you're willing to act on revelation, it will do great things in your life. But before we get started, let's just go ahead and give thanks and welcome the presence of God. Lord, we thank you for your love, for your blessings. We thank you for your favor, Lord. You are excellent. Thank you, Lord God, for your presence. Thank you, Lord God, for the power of agreement. Thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you for Jesus, the word made flesh. Lord God, I praise you. I magnify you. I exalt you. I thank you, Lord God. There's none like you. I welcome your presence, Holy Spirit. I welcome your presence, Holy Spirit. I bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, that you're willing to speak and give understanding and revelation. Thank you, Lord God, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right, I'm excited about this teaching, so you'll just have to bear with me. I know I'm going to you know, start talking fast, but that's just how I am sometimes. I'm trying to work on it. We're going to start out in Acts 2. The power of agreement is an amazing thing, and once you can find it, once you can tap into it, nothing will be off limits to you. It gets a, a realm of faith that's just off the charts. Okay, so Acts 2, when the holy day of Pentecost came, 50 days after Passover, they were gathered together in one place. A sound roars from the sky without warning, the roar of a violent wind, and the whole house where you gathered reverberates with the sound. Okay, so this is something if you've ever listened to me teach about anything before, you know when the presence of God is coming into the earth, earth realm, creation reacts to it. So there's wind and all kinds of stuff going, a roar and all this stuff going on. Then a flame appears, dividing into smaller flames and spreading from one person to the next. So this is the holy angels, because we learned in the Old Testament that the angels are, um, they are flames of fire. All people are present and filled with Holy Spirit and begin speaking in languages they've never spoken this, as the Spirit empowers them. Because of the holy festival, they are devout Jews, staying as pilgrims in Jerusalem from every nation under the sun. They hear the sound and a crowd gathers. They are amazed because each of them can hear the group speaking in native tongues, in native languages. They are shocked and amazed by this. All right. So one of the great things about this scripture here, and this is the voice translation, so it may not give you the, you know, what you're used to hearing. But what we learned in the other translations is that they were all joined together in one accord, worshiping and praising the Lord. And that's what brought down the presence of the Holy Spirit. That's what ushered in the presence of the Holy Spirit, which they had been waiting for because Jesus told them to tarry in Jerusalem until power from on high comes upon you. And this is power on high. You need power on high. And that's why this course is called the power of agreement because what it does is you get into agreement. You get into one accord with another person or a group of people and that ushers in the presence of God. Why do you need that presence of God? Number one, it's the power from on high. You need that presence. You know that it's creative power to work because Genesis 1 tells us God speaks into his presence and then things are created okay so when you are joined together in one accord with another people with another person or a group of people and you're praising the Lord seeking the Lord worshiping the Lord his presence is going to break through into your atmosphere and the things that you speak are going to come to pass so before I go any further let me just share some things with you I started praying with a prayer partner in November the first week of November I think it was November 2nd was the exact date 2014 and we prayed through to um, the beginning of January 2014. So two full months of praying. We would get on the phone. They were in a different um, location than I was. So we'd get on the phone every night at midnight. And we'd be praying and praying and praying. We had some specific things that we needed to accomplish over a two-month period. When we joined together in prayer. And the Lord took care of all of that stuff for us. It was amazing. Like we had so many answered prayers. It just doesn't make sense. Like I'd never seen anything like it in my entire life. And I was asking the Lord you know, why is this so powerful? Why is this going on? And, and there were a lot of things that came into play. Number one was desperation because, um, when you're desperate and when you're hungry, Matthew five, five, one of my favorites, those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, they will be filled, you know, and that's one of the, the great things about, um, being broken and not being perfect. Like I, one of the great things, that's why God's able to use me. And I'm telling you the truth here is because I'm such a mess. And, um, you know, I'm like, I need his presence for everything. Like I can't accomplish anything without it. I, I, 
I want to say I suck. That's not nice language. I apologize. But seriously, without him, I cannot accomplish anything. So when you approach him for things and you have that hunger and that desperation and you actually understand you cannot do anything worthwhile without him. And this is the truth because when I've been in prayer recently, I was telling him, Lord, I don't want any of my works to be burned up, you know, in that last day. If, if, if whatever I'm doing is not honoring and pleasing you, let, like get it out of the way right now. I want my works to come through pure as gold and silver. So I had that hunger and I had that desperation. And then two of us together had that hunger and that desperation to really get what we needed done. Like we wanted miracles. Like I wasn't in desperate need or anything, um, but w but there were things that I knew that I couldn't accomplish without the Lord. So it was that kind of desperation. It wasn't like, um, you know, I was going to be, you know, um, put in jail or anything like that type of desperation if the Lord doesn't didn't come through. But it was miracle stuff. It was a requirement that the Lord get involved. Otherwise, things wouldn't come to pass. So we got together and we're praying every night consistently. And one of the times we were praying, the Lord gave me a vision and I got to see um, into second heaven. And that's where the warfare is at. So I see that um, there's an explosion that goes through second heaven and then this little bitty hole opened up and that would get our prayers from the earth realm up into third heaven. You know, you have to break through second heaven where the warfare is because the enemy wants to stop your prayers when they go up. And that's why a lot of times, you know, people say, oh, I've been praying for this, I've been praying for this and praying for this, but I haven't received any answer. Well, that's because you haven't broken through the warfare of second heaven yet. You know, you, you have to persist in prayer. This is something I say this every single day to somebody you have to persist in prayer that's what breakthrough is you're breaking through that warfare of second heaven so that your prayers go right up to the throne room as soon as they get into the throne room the lord answers them like they are given to an angelic host and assigned to be answered so it's up to you to fight through fight through fight through fight through and get your prayers you know to get a hole put in second heaven so that your prayers can go up through so then we're praying and praying and praying all these months and all these weeks. And then uh, a later time, I get a vision of like this huge explosion. Second heavens like completely burst open and our prayers are going right up. And then the Lord says, this is after we've been praying for like two weeks, maybe three weeks. And after we broke through and then the Lord um, sent this messenger angel down and I have a podcast or a video, either one recorded on this, where this angel broke through. He came right in here in my room, stood here with the scroll, the scroll, the first one said victory. He came back, had a second scroll. It said breakthrough on it. And I was like, yes, because we were in one accord. That means we had the same heart. We had the same spirit. We had the same mind. We were focused on the same things. We were looking to the same person. Like there was no division between us at all. And that is hard to accomplish. It, we didn't start out that way. It took us like three weeks. Like I said, two or three weeks to get in a rhythm that we were like right, you know, like we were s flowing and smoothing. Momentum is one of the words that the Lord spoke that you guys have gained momentum. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. So you have to be in the same accord. You have to be the same heart. You have to be in the same mind. That is not easy to achieve. And a lot of times like in this season, and right now I've invited because I've had some dreams about people and some things going on in their lives some people that I'm connected with and I've invited them to pray with me and it's really hard to connect and pray with people consistently people you know finding somebody who's of the same mind the same heart the same desire as you to pray with consistently is difficult you know it's really really difficult to do so I've invited a few people to pray and it's hard to connect with them you know it's, it's going to be to your benefit to find somebody who can be consistent and faithful with you in prayer because you need to build momentum and you need to break through you know um, there's a saying out there and I don't know exactly who said it I think it was St. Augustine but he said history belongs to the intercessor those of you who are praying and you learn how to pray and you know how to pray with somebody else you will do uh, great things for the kingdom of God. You will do great things in your life. Nothing will be off limits to you. If you are married, you know, if you're not married, you shouldn't be praying with a boyfriend or anything like that because you are not of the same mind. You're not of the same heart, the same spirit yet. That's not, you know, like I've never heard of the Lord telling somebody to, to pray with somebody that they're dating, you know, that, that doesn't, but then I'm not a dating type. So, you know, you, you can throw out anything that you don't agree with. But if you're not of the same mind and the same heart, you don't want to be praying with them. And this is the thing, because the soul, your your soul, your spiritual heart is deceptive above all things. So that's why it's so hard to enter into that agreement with somebody. But if you're married, you have a great opportunity, you know, to, to be in one heart, one soul, one spirit, one mind with somebody. And you can accomplish some great things if you have a husband who knows how to pray and who loves the Lord or a wife who knows how to pray and loves the Lord you guys can get into agreement you know and start small don't 
don't start, you know, I'm praying for a thousand things. Get into agreement on one thing. Watch the Lord break heaven open for you for that, you know, for you being consistent in prayer in the same heart, same mind, the same accord for that one thing. And then you build on that. You know, that's another thing like, um, because I have experience in this and I teach these courses and stuff and people hear stuff and they run out and they're like, oh, well, let me do that. Let me do that. Let me do that. You know, yes, because I, I, you know, the anointing is caught, not taught, and you can get some of what I have. But at the same time, like everything starts small. Like I said, it took us two to three weeks till we were like of one mind, of one heart, of one spirit. And this is why it's important. The word tells us that one person praying, one believing person praying puts a thousand to flight. Two puts 10,000 to flight. So that's the type of power. Your power, the multiplication of the Lord is out of control and you want that and you need that and that's why you want to pray in agreement with somebody okay but what I was saying about not praying with somebody just like if you are engaged and you know for sure that you are getting married yes you should be praying together right you know with guidelines and boundaries of course and everything but if you're just dating somebody you probably don't want to be praying with them because your soul has a desire and their soul has a desire and unless you've had an external source you know come in and tell you definitely go pray you know you should be praying with this person and then do that you know wait for an outside confirmation from the lord but until the lord puts you know puts the word out there for you to to join in prayer to do that i wouldn't do it because everybody has their own agenda everybody has their own issues and you don't want um that those soulish desires taking control especially if you have been intimate with them or you've had feelings of lust toward them you definitely don't want to be uh, praying in agreement with them you want to be praying with somebody of the same sex so two men two single men should be praying together for you know that for their marriages and then single women should be praying together for their marriages that's what I'm trying to say and the reason for it is to to keep the prayer holy and to keep it pure and to keep it focused now if you guys are just like you work on a um, like you volunteer you're on a mission or something like that together it's kind of okay for you to pray because you're not you know trying to figure out if you're supposed to be together and stuff like that but don't don't use this course because I listen I'm telling you this because I've written this book about praying for your wife and praying for your husband I'm telling you this so that you don't take this information and think oh well you know I really like this person I want to marry them maybe we should you know get into the power of agreement so don't do that that's not what I'm advising you to do at all if the Lord tells you otherwise of course you go with him because he's the higher truth you know, I'm just giving you what I've learned and what I've been instructed specifically by him and by trusted mentors. You know, they've come into agreement with that, with this, what I'm instructing you as well. Um, the thing is that your, your, your soul's desires, your spirit and your understanding, like that's what I'm saying, your mind, your heart, your spirit, everything needs to be a, on one accord. You need to be going the same direction. You know, you need to be focused. You need to be diligent you need to be willing to shut all other things off and come into complete sync with this person like there are um times where like you're so in tune with this other person and this is why you want to be sure you know who, who you're praying with you you're so in tune with this other person that you get information and stuff like them stuff like that for them and about them and things like that and so you want to be sure that it's a situation where there's complete trust complete openness you know you have to be willing to confess your sins to each other you have to be willing to you know just bear your soul lay it all out there and let everything that's going on be visible you know it, it's a place of vulnerability it's not a place where you um can go in hiding things and then think that you're going to be able to to end up with having those prayers answered it doesn't work that way you know it doesn't work that way that's why the married couples have such an advantage over the rest of us you know I mean it's not a complete advantage because if you like I said my friend and I were praying together two single women just praying focusing on the Lord um, allowing him to lead us in hunger and desperation and he showed up and 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 showed up let me give you some more scripture before I go any further the Bible tells us not to be unequally yoked um, what business does dark have with light? Okay, that's the same situation with the power of agreement. You, you. This is why being of one accord, one of one heart and one mind is so important. And I keep saying that over and over again because everybody says, "Oh, I get that, I get that, I get that." But actually achieving it 
is a difficult task. It is not an easy task. Like you can look at any number of marriages out there and know, like just talking to people, like I watched a video of Mariah Carey and Nick Cannon before they, they separated. It was um, Diane Sawyer. And she was asking him, well, you know, what are the plans and hopes and things you have for your kids? And he was saying, you know, I want them to get a good education. And she, and at the same time, she spoke and said, oh, I want them to love music. And then so they kind of had this little beef. And he was like, well, music's not everything. You know, entertainment's not everything. She was saying, but yeah, but I love music and they're going to love music. And you should see how they respond to music and that other stuff like that. And you can see that little tension. Even people who are married, like being on one accord and one mind and one spirit, getting into like actual agreement where to become one in the spirit this doesn't have anything to do with um it's about intimacy it doesn't have anything to do with um sexual relations that is a difficult task to achieve it is not as easy as you think it is it is not as easy as you think it is. Th this is a perfect example sometimes like a lot of times i tell people they'll ask me for prayer and i'm like you pray and i'll agree and the reason i do this is because i know that they don't have the same faith that i have so i'm not going to waste my time you know you know praying for them because it's not going to come to pass. Jesus said, anything you ask in prayer, or if two or, two or more of you touch and agree on anything in my name in prayer, our Father in heaven will do it. You have to touch and agree. He's saying your spirit has to match up with theirs. Your mind has to touch theirs. Your heart has to touch theirs. Like a lot of times people like to put their hands on things, and yes, that makes a difference. But if you ask the Lord what exactly that means so that you can have that scripture activated in your life. What he's saying is your minds need to touch, your hearts need to touch, your souls need to touch, your spirits need to touch so that when you ask me for this one thing, 10,000 are put to flight and there's no way in the world that it's going to be stopped. That's what praying in agreement is. That's what the power of agreement is. Okay. Another scripture, um, Amos, how can two walk together unless they are agreed? Same mind, same heart, same soul, same spirit. You have to be like right on, you know, and that's that part about being able to be transparent, being able to be vulnerable, being able to share the things, you know, that you need to share. Like um, James tells us to confess your sins to one another. No, that doesn't mean going around telling everybody your sin. You find somebody who's safe, somebody who's trustworthy, somebody who's also going to be willing to confess to you, you know, what you've done. It needs to be a mutual trust. A, a mutual exchange so you come into to agreement with somebody confess your sins and those things like start to open up like James talks about how it opens up healing to you when you confess your sins to people but it also opens up heaven to you when you're able to do that because God is all about relationships you know he's all about covenant he's all about bringing people together Adam and Eve in, in Adam and Eve in the garden right he couldn't do as much by himself as he could when they came together. When they came together in agreement, they started multiplying and, and populating the entire world. You know, that's what one level of agreement does for you. You know, you're able to reproduce things. You know, um, my mentor, Dr. Mike Murdoch, always says that one can't multiply. That's the truth. You, you need to have another person to be able to multiply and to bring greater. Now, let me tell you, don't think that you know if you're single like I am and I do a lot of praying by myself but I know Holy Spirit and his multiplication he's my agreement you know and his multiplication is beyond anything so don't ever let it discourage you and think that you can't thank you Lord I just thank you I just saw a double life okay so it doesn't mean um that you can't pray just because you don't have somebody else to pray with you but when you can find somebody who's diligent and somebody who's willing to agree with you and willing to stick with you, you know, like the, the one time prayer is not going to get it. Like if, if you could do it like at least once a week, it's going to be good. But you just have to understand that it's going to take you longer to get that breakthrough, to get um, put together in a way that matches so much. You know, it's just like hiring a coach or a mentor. That's what I am. I'm a mentor. And a lot of times people just want like a one a one type of call thing. And that's fine. You can get good revelation from that one time thing. But think about when you are um, hiring a mentor or a coach. If you can consistently stay with them for a month, think about all of the, the things that you can get done. Why is it that way? Because you're putting 10,000 to flight. Because there are two of you working together toward the same goals. You're of one mind, of one heart, of one spirit, focused on you getting from one place to the next place. This is the um, 
one of the he gave me two and I'll share both of them the I'm very visual I get visions all the time and the Lord explains things to me like sometimes I'll just be reading the word and he'll just flash the movie and that gives me great understanding and great revelation but in my um, video teaching called the path to the promise I shared this this I probably shared it other places too but the Lord showed me because I love football he showed me this football field and it's like you're on you know your end and then, of course, you have to break through to the enemy's side to get to the end zone and get the touchdown, right? So when you have a promise of God or you have a prophetic word or you have a need, you know, you need healing, you need a miracle, you need finances, whatever, you're on your side of the football field. And it's 100 yards to break through the enemy's territory and get that touchdown, to get that answer prayer, to get that healing, to get that miracle. So what happens is you're fighting and fighting and fighting a little bit at a time so that you can break through to get there. Do you always get there the first time you um, pray the prayer? No. Do you get there always the second time? No. Do you get there always the third time? No. Sometimes you don't even get there when you've prayed for it this time. You have to start all over again praying. And that's something that's very important. That's why I talk about consistency and don't stop. Because when it took us two to three weeks to get you know just a little bitty hole to break open so that our prayers could go up, you know, Think about that. It takes time. You have to build that atmosphere so that heaven is open above you consistently and all the time. You know, and that's not something that is easy to achieve. You know, that's what I'm saying. It took, and we're regular people who pray. You know, we're people who serve in the ministry. And it took us two to three weeks praying in agreement to break through and have a little bitty hole break through the warfare of second heaven so that our prayers could go right up. And then God was able to start answering, pouring out answers, pouring out answers, pouring out answers, pouring out answers. So think about that. You have to be consistent in prayer. You have to persevere in prayer. You need to pray with somebody who's thinking the same as you, feeling the same as you, desiring the same as you, loving the Lord the same as you. You know, it's really important. And you can agree with somebody. You know, Doug Addison always says, it doesn't matter who's praying for you. The, the more prayer you can get, the better. That is true. But what I'm saying is when you start to understand these specific revelations that I'm sharing with you, you'll understand how important it is to have somebody who's, you know, of great faith praying with you, you know, as far as agreement works. And how um, important it is to have you constantly sending up prayer, constantly sending up prayer, constantly sending up prayer, constantly sending up prayer. Sending up prayer. And this is another thing. Um, when there are people out there who, you know, they, for whatever reason, they're in a season of disobedience, you know, they don't have enough wisdom, whatever, they have that block over them. Their prayers are not breaking through second heaven. They're, they're earthbound. They're just stuck right there. You know, if, if you know somebody has that issue, you know, you give them the revelation and tell them, you know, you, you're going to have to break through some warfare. You're going to have to make some changes in your life so that you can start moving into a place where your prayers are answered. Lots of different ways you can do that. Getting in the Word, setting yourself away from the Lord, making sure you stop sinning if you're sinning, confession, all those things. You know, ask, Jeremiah 33, 3, call out to me and I'll answer you and show you great and mighty things that you can't know without me, things that are hidden and fenced in. Ask the Lord, how do I break through in prayer? How do I break through in prayer? Ask him those questions. James 1, 5, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of the Lord. He doesn't upbraid. He's not going to criticize you, and he gives it to you in abundance. Ask him for the wisdom. You need wisdom for every day, but you also need wisdom to learn how to break through and how to be powerful in prayer, and he'll give you that wisdom. I'm a witness of that. You know, I'm an absolute witness. I'm a living, walking, talking testimony of him giving me strategies of how to be effective in prayer. Okay, so let me just... Um, share some of the things and then I'll go back to scripture that we went through that we discovered and experienced I already shared with you about the messenger angel that came here and said victory and breakthrough after we had been praying for like two to three weeks but just those are wonderful things and the Lord will confirm that you're on the right track he will confirm that you're making headway that you're getting closer and closer and closer to what you were doing look for those signs look for those confirmations I shared in another video recently that when I was praying to get my son back you know, in the natural, it didn't look like anything was changing, didn't look like anything was happening. But I had a record of all those dreams and all those visions and all those confirmations that the Lord was giving me. And all of those little things are little pieces of breakthrough. They're little markers of breakthrough telling me that I was on my way to the success that I wanted. You know, so watch out for those things. Record those things. Let me see. And the, this is another great thing about praying with somebody in agreement. Like they're getting prophetic words, you're getting prophetic words, and you're, you know, words from the Lord, and you're able to write all of that good stuff down. It's just awesome. Here's a, a, a um, 
encounter that we had on December 19th, 2014. So we're praying. It's 3.09 a.m. And we're praying in the spirit. And immediately I had this visitation where I was in the courtroom of heaven. There was an angel standing there with me. And um, when I went in, there was another angel there that was huge. And he was like guarding the courtroom of heaven. The father was on the throne and Jesus was standing like right there, you know, where an attorney would be who was addressing the throne. It was so beautiful. And the Lord said to plead your case. And the rest of this information, the rest of this encounter is going to be um, in a snaps video. So you can check that out later if you're interested in knowing about the whole encounter. Such a beautiful experience. Just the promises that the Lord gave and the just everything. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. So we're praying in agreement one of the times and the Lord keeps telling us don't forget your praise don't forget your faith keep an eye on your faith keep an eye on your praise and then um there was one time like this is what I was saying ask the Lord to give you strategy when you need to break through in prayer so I asked the Lord um is there anybody else that I need to forgive and he said no you don't need to forgive but you still have an a tendency to agree with the enemy about people's lack of growth. And I do this because I, I, I know I need to do this. And see, this is how important praying in agreement was. Like the Lord didn't give me that information when I was praying alone. He gave it to me when I was praying with somebody else, praying with my prayer partner. So I was asking him, Lord, I know that there's a breakthrough, I mean, a block there. What is it? And that's the great thing about prayer. Like you can see, you know, you'll get visions of things like that. And you'll see that there's something standing in the way of what you need to get to. So I had this block, ask the Lord, what, you know, what do I need to do? And I always start with for unforgiveness because I know how powerful it is. I've shared this tons of times before, but when I was going through that process writing, oh Lord, forgive them. The Lord gave me this vision and he showed me when you have unforgiveness, you're stained. You know, you've got dirt all over you. You cannot enter into the fullness of the presence of God. Remember, there are three parts to entering into the Lord's um, you, you go through his gates, you go through his courts, and then you get to go into the Holy of Holies. Okay, well, getting into the Holy of Holies, a lot of us don't get there on a regular basis. That's not always where you get to go. I had an experience when I was praying with um, my prayer partner where I actually went into the Holy of Holies. How do I know? Because I went into, I was, we were praying and worshiping together, and I went into this place and I saw the seven lampstands, and that represents the seven man manifold presence of the uh, Spirit of the Lord. And um, that was kept in the Holy of Holies. So I knew we had, you know, been ushered into a great place of intimacy with the Lord during that praying in agreement. That's how powerful praying in agreement is. You know, you get to experience things that you don't experience by yourself. You know, you get to um, get revelation, understanding and breakthrough and things like that that you don't get by yourself. And why does the Lord do that? Because he created us to be relational people. He created us to be in covenants with others. You know, he wants us to be able to use each other's gifts and feed off of each other and things like that. So, you know, grab, don't grab, pray for a diligent prayer partner, one who's of like faith. Just pray for one and ask one and the Lord will send you. You know, you don't always need them, but they're good to have. But like I needed one and she needed one back in November and the Lord sent. Why? Because we both asked. You know, he, he gives everything. He doesn't withhold anything from those who walk uprightly. He loves us so much. He's going to give you everything you ask. Matthew 21, 22, anything you ask him for believing, you're going to receive. He's a faithful God. You know, he, he cannot fail you. He's not going to. Don't think for a minute that, you know, that, that God's just going to start failing for you just so you can say he failed you. It doesn't work that way. Okay. Let me real quickly review some of the scriptures that I've spoken over. Um, Acts 2, they were in one mind, one accord, brought the presence of the Lord, um, brought down angelic assistance. And you need angelic assistance. Why? Because they're the ones who are actually doing the fighting for you in the spirit. They take the word of God out of your mouth. And they're the ones who are clearing that pathway, clearing that end zone, knocking out those linemen and those defensive backs and those corners and all that stuff. They're knocking all of those people out of the field so that you can get to the end zone, get your touchdown, get your answer prayer, get your healing, get your whatever. So in Acts 2, when the, the, it says the flames of fire and the wind are coming down, the, the Psalms also tells us that um, angelic hosts are flames of fire and they're also winds. Like It says the Lord um, sits in his chariot and he rides upon the winds and comes down to the earth. Those winds that he's riding on are the backs of angelic hosts. So they're praying together in one accord, one mind, one heart, one spirit, uh, burst open you know, heaven, and then all of this stuff is coming down. They need the presence of God because when the presence of God comes, they begin to speak and things manifest. And we get that from Genesis 1 when the Lord speaks his presence. The Holy Spirit is hovering over the chaos and he speaks into it. And it brings um, 
um, excellence. You know, it brings light. It brings blessing. It brings favor. It brings just all those good things. Like he takes chaos and when his presence is there, he turns it around. That's why you um, pray before you read your Bible. Why you bring that presence in there and all of these things that seem like gobbledygook make complete sense to you. Beautiful, beautiful. Again, I told you the Bible tells us not to be unequally yoked. Again, don't get yoked with somebody. Don't come into covenant. Don't marry somebody. Don't, you know, um, hang out with somebody, you know, for, for long term and for life and for things like that who are not of the same mind, the same heart, the same spirit. Yes, you're going to have friends that are all over the place and non-believers and stuff like that. You definitely want to have those people. You want to be praying for those people, but you don't want to be um, unequally yoked. That means you don't want to be in relationship with them. You don't want to be in contract with them. You don't want to be in covenant with them. Like you don't want them to be in a position where they can speak wisdom into your life or where they can, um, you know, make decisions for your life. Unless of course the Lord directs, cause he can use a donkey. And sometimes, you know, the, those words come from people who aren't in relationship with him, but if he needs to get it to you, he's going to get it to you however he wants to. And of course, that's all wisdom and discernment. Use wisdom and discernment. That's another scripture that I mentioned. James 1, 5, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask. You know, the Lord's going to give you that information that you need. Let me give you another example. I just remembered it right now when I'm asking for that because I was praying James 1, 5 with one of my mentors and um, about um, some things because this first six months of 2015 is crucial for your destiny. So I've been really um, setting myself apart and seeking the Lord, like, give me the steps for the days ahead and, you know, the future. I want to be sure that I'm walking out your path and not trying to, you know, just throw my own things in there because they're what I desire. I want to be submitted to you. And so I was praying with my mentor. We're praying in one agreement, you know, in one heart, one mind, one accord because you know he's my apostle so he knows you know he's somebody who sends me out he's somebody who directs me where I should go where I'm assigned those types of things and so we came together and we prayed James 1 5 and the Lord brought this beautiful word gave me great direction for the future great understanding you know more um encouragement just everything just to make sure that I was on, on the right track and to also to launch me into a new place that I haven't been in before because that's what apostles do they send out okay um, another one we talked about was Amos how can two walk together unless they are agreed when you're walking together that means you're going through the same direction the same thing as being unequally yoked if you're yoked to somebody you can't go left and they go right you know you have to be going in the same direction so the Lord asked the question how can two walk together unless they are agreed you need to be of the same mind the same heart the same spirit and when you do that your um, power and prayer is off the charts I know I keep saying this but it really is let me give you another example about um, this and stuff that we were praying for okay so the desperation of my prayer partner was that they were evicted and became homeless so they were very very desperate that's one one way that you can really get the Lord's attention because you're at a place where you're like I don't have anything and I've been there because that same thing happened to me when I when my house foreclosed in 2011 so I was so desperate I was seeking the Lord you know and I cried out to him and said rescue me or kill me and he came in and said read the Psalms so he rescued me he chose rescue okay so that desperation will bring the Lord to you that hunger and thirst brings him to you he desires that why? Because he has everything that we need. And if we can just understand that and focus on him for everything, you know, we wouldn't have to strive. We wouldn't have to worry. We'd be in his rest and the works that we would be doing would be so covered in grace that everything would just be as smooth as butter. You know, of course you're going to have trials and things like that. So don't, you know, don't oversimplify. I mean, I'm not, I'm oversimplifying for the, for the, for effect, I guess you could say, but just, you know, be hungry for him find somebody else who's as hungry for the same thing that you're praying for as him and it's fine like say one person's praying for one thing and another person's praying for one thing that's fine you know um but just just focus like pick one thing one thing for that person one thing for you or one thing if you guys are are married or whatever and you both are praying for the same thing just pray for that one thing because when you can focus you'll do a lot better the lord said that to me a couple weeks ago a couple days ago when I was in prayer he was like focus what do you want he was telling me to focus on one thing because that's what I'm going to give you you know so you get focused that's again has to do with being of one heart one mind one spirit okay so 
their um, situation, their de situation of desperation was homelessness. And my situation was, I'm like, Lord, you brought me to this place where um, I have all of my daily bread, everything that I need, I'm able to take care of, but you've promised me more and I want to break through into more. So basically we were both praying for provision. I was praying for greater breakthrough and provision, greater realms of provision. And she was praying for immediate provision, daily bread provision. So that hunger and that thirst was there for both of us. And then also the um, one heart, one mind, one spirit, one accord was there because we were both praying for God to show up as Jehovah Jireh in our lives. So we began praising him, praising him, praising him, praising him, praising him, seeking him, inviting in his presence, basking in his presence first before we asked for anything. And that built up an intimacy and connection with him. He knew that we loved him and that we were seeking him and him only. Okay. Then after we had been praising and worshiping, entering into praise and worship together, then we begin to say, okay, well, Lord, this is our need. This is our desire. This is our need. And then he um, broke through with this prophetic word and told her, don't worry. I've got your daily bread taken care of. I've look, I'm looking after every detail. All you need to do is keep your faith up. And I read that to keep your praise up. And I'm going to supply every detail, every need for you. And the Lord did that for her. So what he came through for me is what he gave me revelation that is actually going to feed the nation of African Americans and beyond because he gave me um, revelation on how to break through that success ceiling that comes over people. Amazing. How I would have never, if I hadn't had a prayer partner and we hadn't gone in together to pray, I may not have gotten that information right now. You know, that information may not have come for years down the line, you know, or I may have never even, you know, never even asked. But the thing is, you know, when you come in to pray with somebody else, she was saying, well, what can I pray for you for? And I was like, oh, well, you know, because I didn't need any, you know, I was not desperate for anything at the time. And I was like, oh, well, maybe pray for me for this, pray for me for that. So we started praying in one accord. We prayed for two months for the Lord to break open provision for us, open doors for us to give us favor, all that stuff. Two months focused prayer anywhere from like um 15 minutes to three hours praying it didn't depend we let the spirit do whatever he wanted to do did we miss out on sleep yes that's the sacrifice you know did we have to give up some other things yes that's the sacrifice that's the hunger that's the thirst that's the desperation do you want to be able to receive from god or are you worried about you know something else you know, you're worried about not being able to, you know, do this because you're spending time in prayer. Not being able to do this because you're spending time in prayer. The thing is, is that it's only going to be for a season, you know. And the sacrifice is always worth it. God honors the sacrifice. You know, he honors the sacrifice. He sees those vows that you make. When you commit to him and say, I'm coming in. You know, the two of us, the three of us, the ten of us are coming in to pray and seek you about one, two, three, four, five items until this end of this date. He's going to meet with you, and I'm a witness of that. And that's why I'm sharing this information with you right now, okay? And also, one thing let me let you know is that the enemy's going to try to bring strife. Once you start to get revelation about being in the same mind, same heart, same spirit, same accord, the enemy's going to try to bring strife and try to cause problems and things like that because it, he, that's just how they are. They want that agreement pulled apart. They're going to start um, putting other things in the way, like, Toward the last bit of December, I got really busy. All kind of outside things started coming up, and it, it was almost like we were going to have to start um, rearranging our prayer and things like that. It was, praise God, we were almost at the end of our season of prayer. But, you know, things started coming in that were going to mess up our schedule and things like that. But we had to push through. We had to fight. We had to guard that time as if it was a baby, you know, that we were protecting because we needed, you know, we had committed to that season of prayer until we got specific breakthroughs, until we got specific revelations that we need, until we, you know, moved from one dimension to another dimension. And that's what we did. The Lord was telling us when we were praying together, he's like, you guys have moved into a new realm of faith. You've new, moved into a new dimension of finances. You've moved into a new dimension of provision. You've moved into a new dimension of power, just all kind of stuff, because we came in there in one heart, one spirit, one mind, one accord. Like I, I, I don't even know that I actually have the words to explain to you how powerful that process that we went through is. And I am going to try to you know, think it out a little bit more and try to get the understanding of, you know, just some words to make sense, but I don't know that I have them. Like the, 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 it just didn't make sense. You know, like the Lord 
well, let me just give you some more examples. Like the Lord coming through, um, like one time, um, she had gotten enough money to go to a hotel and man, do I know what that's like. I still have some of the receipts. I kept them from times when I stayed in a hotel when I was in Arizona in 2011, just because it's a reminder, you know, of how the Lord took care of me during that time when I had no job, no money, no nothing, you know, but, um, there were times when she had enough money to stay in a hotel, but she was going to have to check out the next day. So we'd be praying and praying and praying and praying and praying and trust the Lord. And somebody would call and say, you know, um, the Lord told me to check in with you. And then somebody ended up paying for her hotel for like the next three weeks and stuff like that. And then, um, um, during the holidays came up and all of her family lived in a different place than where she lived. So she was going to have to travel to get to them. So she didn't have to spend the holidays alone. So we prayed and the Lord would come up and provide transportation for her to get there to be with her family for the holidays and then transportation for her to come back um because she lost her place to live um she was wondering if she needed to just drop out of school for the end of the semester we prayed about that we asked for favor we asked the lord to take control and um like all of her professors are like no we're gonna work with you just you know do this do this do this and then we'll give you even let you do a couple of assignments after christmas break and stuff like that it was just amazing stuff the lord was just working everything out everything out everything out like the type of stuff i never even seen so many answer prayers just happen boom 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 and it was like we would pray one night and every day the next day everything we prayed for would be answered and um it was it was like i said it was after we had broken through like that first two to three weeks it wasn't immediate it didn't start out like that you know first we broke through we got the revelation that we broke in through then the lord began to speak and release and say okay i'm coming into agreement with you you know you guys have done what you needed to do to break into my realm and now i'm going to start releasing oh that reminds me another thing like when we were praying after a little while the lord said command the floodgates of heaven to be open and ask for the abundance of rain we were praying and asking for the abundance of rain commanding the floodgates of heaven to be open and it was raining in the natural where she lived and where i lived it was raining and this is not rain season for Jesus. We both live in the north, and it's snow season for both of us. But no, we weren't getting snow. We were getting rain. And I even covered, um, I mean, recorded a couple videos and showed the rain that was coming down and stuff because it was amazing. It was it was wonderful. It was miraculous. The natural realm was responding to what we were commanding to happen in the heavens. Just, just amazing stuff. It was awesome. The power of agreement. Let me tell you, Lord, I just pray right now, and I decree that the understanding of this revelation will come through lord i know that um my words they just don't compare to to what needs to be expressed so father i just say right now holy spirit i ask that you please go into every soul and deposit the understanding and the revelation of the power of agreement right now lord god I ask that you please supersede my human words my human mind my mistakes my bumbling and fumbling lord and send the revelation ignited in them right now into every soul into every spirit lord god bless it to make sense mind body soul penetrate them with understanding and revelation about the power of agreement okay so let me just review the scriptures that i wanted to have for us um james told us to confess our sins and to come together and pray again that's agreement why because it's powerful there's power in numbers power 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 in numbers that's james um five is such a good 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 scripture about agreement let me see if i can flip there real fast also the scripture and you can look these up i mean most of us know them and i used to go through and like write the um when i first started recording videos i used to go through and write the um scriptures that because i know them but i don't always know where they are in the bible and write them on the video but that takes so many hours i don't have time to do that right now and i apologize but you can you can get on google and type write the word scripture and then type in the words that you hear and then it will give you the address if you if you um need those things and i'm not trying to be like lazy about it and stuff like that but you know that's just how i uh how i teach a little bit i'm sorry i don't always know the the addresses all right, so James 5.13, are any of you in the community suffering? They should pray. Any celebrating? They should sing praises to God. Are any sick? They should call the elders of the church and ask them to pray. They will gather around, anoint them with oil. Prayers offered in faith will restore them from sickness and bring them to health. Okay, this part right here, he's all talking about being of one accord, one, of my, one mind, one spirit, one heart in agreement. The prayer of sick is going to bring them healing. Agreement is 
powerful. And this is why a lot of times, like, you know, people pray for stuff and they're like, oh, they don't happen. They don't happen. You know, a lot of times if you, if both people were praying or all the people who are praying don't have the same faith, you're not breaking through as quickly as you need to break through. That's what I'm saying. When you, when you pray with somebody, make sure you pay attention to who you're praying through. You know, like, I'm talking about when you're like in those seasons of prayer, like we were for two months. Like it wouldn't have made any sense for me to get into two months of prayer with a baby Christian when I'm fighting for something like asking for a new dimension and provision. That wouldn't have made any sense. They wouldn't have been able to carry me in that situation. Does that understand? That's Does that make sense? Do you understand that? That's what I'm trying to get across. So let's say like... Um, Cancer. Cancer is a huge thing. You know, it takes a lot of prayer to get through cancer unless you're one of those people who has that anointing to just, you know, to, to smash cancer. Um, if You're not going to want to go get a baby Christian to try to come to agreement with you for an immediate healing unless they're one of those baby Christians who are like on fire. Like if they're one of those people who are on fire and they just hear the word of the Lord and they just believe all of it right away, then you definitely want to pray with those people because when you have childlike faith, you get everything done everything okay another scripture that i brought up was amos how could two walk together when they are agreed another thing i brought up was adam and eve in, in the garden you know they multiplied through their agreement they weren't able to do that until there were two of them together um also the power of agreement we have a trinity we don't just serve one we serve a three in one why because the power of agreement god jesus the holy spirit that's talking to you about agreement. They walk in one accord. Remember Jesus said, I don't do anything unless I see the Father doing it. I don't say anything unless I hear it. And remember the Holy Spirit says um, that he will show us all things, teach us all things. Like that's putting us into agreement with what's going on in heaven. You know, that's helping us to be successful. That's why like um, the enemy fights prophecy so much. And there's so many believers out there in so many churches that like try to squash prophecy and, and visions and all that stuff why because the enemy doesn't want christians to be free to come into agreement with what's going on in heaven you come into agreement with what's going on in heaven you don't lack anything you know you take territory you have authority you have power why because you're agreeing with the eternal universe you know with the 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 end all be all you know, the beginning and the end. Heaven is the beginning and the end. You know, that's God's realm. That's his universe. That's his kingdom. When that kingdom comes down here, the things that are down here have to fold. You know, they have to submit because that's the higher truth. Okay? All right. I'm assuming that, though, if you're listening to anything that I teach, that you don't have any issue with, with prophecy. Oh, another thing um, about agreement. In Genesis, remember when... Um, the, the Lord put, had um, Noah and his family put. All right. Sorry about that. I had a little technical difficulty. I don't know why I have such a hard time with technology, but that's going to stop right now. I'm going to conquer it. Um, let me review some steps to, uh, let me review the scriptures first, and then I'll re review the steps to um, walking in the fullness of the power of agreement. Um, number one the Bible, you know, there's God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. They are the Trinity. They're three in one. That's a perfect picture of agreement and the power that's contained in it. We're made in their image and the things that they can do, we can do, you know, with our limits, of course, because God is who he is. But, um, that the power of agreement opens up what you can do because of the power of God that will come down upon you when you join together in prayer. Um, how can two walk together unless they are agreed? Um, anything you touch and two or more of you touch and agree on in prayer in Jesus' name, our Father in heaven will do it for us. Um, do not be unequally yoked. What business does dark have with lightness? Um, what else in James? Get together and pray over people. Um, Acts 2, they were all together joined in one accord. They were um, seeking God with one heart, one mind. Beautiful. And then one of the most important things, sections about... Um, the power of agreement is Genesis 11 and that's, I'm going to read this to you and then I'll talk to you about the steps to, to activating the power of agreement in your own life. Okay. Genesis 11. There was a time when everyone on earth spoke the same language. As many of these people began moving from the Eastern regions into the Western part of Mesopotamia, they settled down on a plain in the land of Shinar. Since stone was not readily available, they discovered how to make bricks and use tar for mortar to build their structures. So the people, they're saying this. 
Come on, let's make bricks out of mud and bake them in the fire. Build ourselves a city with a huge tower that reaches into heaven. That way we'll make a name for ourselves. If we don't, we'll run the risk of being scattered over the earth. The Eternal came down and took a look at the city and the tower the children of Adam were building. He was not pleased. This is God speaking. Will you look at that? People are all together on this. With one language, they are able to start this kind of project. This is only the beginning of what they will do. Soon they will think they can accomplish anything and everything on their own. Let's go down and break this up. If we confuse their language, they won't be able to understand each other's words. Okay, I'm getting all excited here. As you can see, my voice went up. This is the power of agreement right here summed up in the Bible. They are all together on this. They are all together on this. One language. This is just the beginning. This is only the beginning of what they will do. That sums up the power of agreement right there. Genesis 11. They are all together on this. That means, what have I been saying the whole time? One mind, one heart, one spirit, one accord. So a whole group of people. And that's just the beginning of what they will do. He said, soon they will think they can accomplish anything and everything. Now, it says on their own. Now, we know that we cannot accomplish anything on our own. We know we're not going into agreement, you know, in our own strength. We're going in based on the word of God, seeking God. But do you see this? These people were not seeking God. And yet, look what they were able to accomplish. They were able to do something so fantastic that the God of the universe left heaven to come down and look. That's the power of agreement. Get that. If you don't get anything else that I've spoken to you, get that. That's the power of agreement. They are all together on this. One mind, one heart, one spirit, one accord. Okay? This is only the beginning of what they will do. Like building a tower, they were trying to build it up into the heavens. Trying to reach God's throne room. They were trying to break through and reach God. Okay? So he said this is only the beginning of what they will do. That's the power of agreement. That's the power of one mind, one heart, one spirit, one accord. That's the power of agreement right there. So these people were not even seeking God. Imagine what you can do if you get with somebody and you're seeking God first. Nothing will be impossible for you. Get that. Get that. Get that. Get that. So if I have ever harassed you for prayer, this is why. And I know some of you have taken this course. I've harassed you for prayer. I've been like, do you want to pray with me? Do you want to pray with me? Do you want to pray with me? This is why. Because I know, you know, and I've witnessed the stuff that I witnessed between November and December 2014. That's what I'm saying. Like, I can't even, I don't even have words to describe to you how phenomenal it was. Like the Lord just answering prayer, answering prayer, answering prayer, answering prayer, answering prayer. You know, it's just amazing. You know, it gives you another, a greater picture and understanding of why the enemy likes to fight marriages. Because if you can get one mind, one spirit, one heart, one accord, oh my gosh, you can take territory. Look at John and Lisa Bevere. They're a perfect example of that one mind, one heart, one accord, one spirit. The way they move. You can look at it. You can sense that. Okay? So, and this is the interesting thing. I'm not even going to talk about that. I'll talk about that in Genesis when we talk about 11. There's so much great stuff in this chapter that relates back to things that we've already read, but I'm not even going to get, get hyped up on that. Just know that nothing is impossible for you if you can find what we're going to talk about next. This is how you find that person to activate the power of agreement with you. You need to find prayer partner, partners, you know, if you want to do it three a group, whatever. Like, if you want to start a prayer team, you're going with your bad self. Now, that's some power for you right there. But, you know, have a purpose. Um, so, you find somebody who is diligent and willing to pray with you consistently and regularly. You know, a.k.a. desperate. If you got somebody who's desperate, you're going to have even more power because there's nothing that's going to keep them from making that prayer time. You know, if somebody's not desperate, they'll show up sometimes. They won't show up other times. You know, sometimes people just show up because they said they would, but they don't really have the heart for it. And so that leads to the next thing. You find somebody who has faith, who believes that God can do everything that he said he would do. He's, you have to have somebody who has faith that he's going to do Ephesians 3.20, you know, exceedingly abundantly above and beyond. Okay. And then what you want to do is you get together and you, you establish one heart, one mind, one spirit, one accord. How do you do that? You worship him. You worship him. 
You focus on him in spirit and truth. Um, James talks about that knitting our hearts together. That's what the Lord is doing when you seek him in agreement, worshiping him first. You worship him first. How long do you worship him first? As long as it takes. When he breaks through your atmosphere, then you start asking for things. That's a lot of another thing that people don't get. You need to bring the presence of God first before you start asking. Greater um, guarantee that you're going to get your prayers answered. Where do I get that from? Genesis 1. The Lord told us his spirit was hovering over the chaos. He spoke into it. So you wait for the presence to come. That's the manifested power of God. You need that manifested power. You speak into that manifested power. Miracles happen. Things are created. Next day, prayers answered for four weeks in a row. You know, revelation coming down that's going to set a whole ethnic nation, people free from demonic oppression as far as finances are concerned. That's the power of agreement. That's what I experienced in the last two months of the year. Amazing. Never seen anything like it. Okay? So you find somebody who's diligent, aka desperate. You find somebody who has faith. They believe the word of God. They believe God is able. They believe God will. You know, and then you 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 establish one heart, one mind, one spirit, one accord. You do that through praising and worshiping and seeking the face of the Lord, seeking his presence, establishing his presence. Um, how long do you do that? Like I said, as long as it takes, you do it as long as it takes. You know, if you are somebody who's in the habit of bringing the presence of the Lord and it doesn't take you that long and then he gives you that vision and heaven's burst open or either he gives you a word and says, okay, I'm ready. Ask, you know, the Lord will come down and say, you've established, you know, um, my presence in this place. So ask what you will. And I've had that happen to me before, you know, I've been in a season of just worship, worship, worship. That's how I ended up with whatever power anointing, whatever that I have. Because I listened to Matt Sorber say that um, when he got saved, he was like, well, I see, you know, people who are powerful in God and I want to be like that. How do I do it? And he said he sought the Lord for an hour, just worshiping and praising him, playing the same songs over and over and over again for months. And then finally the Lord just broke through and his life hasn't been the same since. I went through the exact same thing. I listened to Matt Sorger and I did that back in 2011. 2012, I'm telling you, when I was fighting for my son, I set myself away from the Lord. And that's the thing about prayer and stuff. Everything takes time. Like, it looks like I'm doing a ton of stuff right now, which I am. But it's because I did all of that behind the scenes back in 2011 and 2012. I just started, like, coming out, you know, you know, being seen and helping other people publicly and stuff like that, like, in 2011. But I had already been, you know, in the, in the wilderness with the Lord for a long time. And then all of this stuff is just now being visible. You know, but it takes time. You have to build up that relationship. You have to develop. You have to fight through, you know, get past the 50-yard line and all that stuff and get to the end zone. And then all these other things seem like they're super easy. And do you have to follow my exact process um, to activate the power of agreement? Absolutely not. But I'm telling you what worked for me. I'm telling you that I had miraculous results. You know, I'm telling you that I have you know, greater testimony and go back and look at testimony Tuesdays and listen to my podcasts and stuff. They talk about all the amazing things that were happening in prayer. And you know, a lot of stuff I don't share because of, um, privacy issues, but, um, I've checked and I know what I can share and what I can't share. But, um, you know, just like the stuff that went on was just beyond anything I'd ever experienced before. Nothing. I've never experienced anything like it. Just praying by myself. Never. Never, never, never. Okay, so I'm going to repeat it again because I know I get hyper. You find somebody who's diligent, a.k.a. desperate, would be nice. Um, you find somebody who is faithful. They have faith. I mean, I mean, I don't mean that they, you know, what I mean is that they believe the Lord. You know, there's nothing that's going to pull them away from the word of the Lord. There's nothing in the way that's, that's going to stop them from meeting with you in prayer because they know that as long as they continue seeking, they're going to receive. Um, and then you praise and worship have heaven break through into your atmosphere and then you begin to ask the lord for those things that you need then you begin to ask in agreement then you you know then you're touching and agreeing and remember you have to remember when the lord when the bible says things like touch and know and stuff like that it's talking about intimacy and that's our thing one heart one mind one spirit one accord when you've got that touching and then you agree on prayer it's done it's a guarantee it's a guarantee it's a guarantee it's a guarantee and it's really awesome Oh, I did have a testimony I shared. Um, it's on a podcast, and I was explaining that um, for for um, my son's birthday in December, for the last three years that like I've planned a birthday party and stuff like that and been like en route traveling to the birthday party with no money in hand, and then the Lord show up and miraculously provide for everything I needed. So you go back and you can go to it's SpreakerWeb.com, and Ms. Banks, M-I-Z-B-A-K-S, is my... Um, Username and also a lot of those podcasts are on YouTube for people to watch. There, there's no 
picture there for you to see just like books and stuff that go by but you can look at them there but listen to those podcasts my son's birthday was in december that those the prayer and how the lord came up came through for his birthday provision this year was you know it was amazing and it all came out of that prayer like we were praying at midnight and then um and i didn't think to ask anything for his birthday i didn't think to, to to do anything for his birthday and then the lord came through and then same with christmas it was like because we did this week-long birthday celebration this year because the lord was just answering prayers so i just kept asking for stuff and i'm like well give me this so i can get zane this and give me this so i can get zane this and give me this so i can get zane this and the lord just kept um you know providing and providing and providing and providing and providing i'm telling you december was like my best financial month like, who, who how, how does that happen like december most of the time people are buying you know Christmas gifts and all this stuff and they're not spending you know with like small businesses and things like that that much they're you know they're worried about crystals worried about stuff and and I even recorded that that somebody was telling me you know December's always my always my difficult month so if you could pray for me and I'm like I don't say that I say I am blessed and it was December was like a phenomenal month for me you know why because we were in that season of prayer and I'm like Lord I want this and he was like okay I'm like Lord I want that and he was like okay so um, those podcasts and those Testimony Tuesdays and stuff like that are out there. Just listen to those things and be encouraged, you know, be encouraged. I'm just an average everyday person. God's no respecter of persons. You know, I always say I'm his favorite, but it's just because I'm always in his face. Like, well, how do I do this? And why is this going on? And blah, blah, blah. But, you know, that's how you get things. You know, you got to be faithful. He's faithful. If you learn to be faithful with him and seeking him, seek first the kingdom. He's going to give you everything you want. I'm a witness of that. So, um, again, like I said, you don't have to follow my process of activating the power of agreement, but it worked. You know, it worked. I accomplished a lot of things. I ended up with a book that's going to, like I said, it's going to set a whole nation of people free. You know, when that revelation gets put out there, it's going to be set free. And where did I get this revelation from? Well, I got it while I was in prayer asking for a greater dimension of provision. That was his answer. He was like, okay, I'm showing you exactly exactly what's going on with you and i'm showing you what's been happening to the african-american people you know for decades i'm going to show you how to break through i'm going to show you how to conquer it i'm going to show you how to win and then i'm sending you forth to teach it awesome all of that came by uh, joining in someone joining in with somebody one heart one mind one spirit one accord for two months of prayer two months of prayer the lord just unfolded revelation like greater revelation that i could even imagine existed you know and it never even occurred to me that demonic forces would grab a hold of an entire ethnic group you know but you get that revelation you know that was the result that was my answer to prayer awesome stuff awesome 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 stuff i think that is just about it i'm going to try to put these two so these two parts together and I hope that everything makes sense and I hope that nothing that was important gets lost. Matter of fact, I just decree right now in Jesus' name according to Job twenty two twenty eight, Lord, you said that I can have whatsoever I say and I say that the revelation is going to go through, the anointing is going to go through, the, the activation is going to go through and then people will go forward seeking you first so that you can give them the desires of their heart and that the power of agreement will take hold of their lives and they will go forward and conquer they will become powerful warriors for the Lord God and they will do mighty exploits because they know you and love you. I declare this all in Jesus' name. Thank you. Okay, dear ones, this is your addendum to the Power of Agreement video. I had some technical difficulties, so there's a section of the video that got um, cut out and I wanted to be sure that I um, went back and put this one portion back in for you and I apologize for anything else that got cut out but I definitely want to get second chronicles 20 in here for you because it speaks so much about the power of agreement it's really fantastic second chronicles 2020 20, after Jehoshaphat had solidified his throne by fortifying the nation and appointing regional judges the Moabites Ammonites and some Mayunites decided to attack him Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat heard about their plans messengers came and said a huge army is quickly approaching Jerusalem they are coming from Edom beyond the Dead Sea but they have already reached Hazan Tamar. Jehoshaphat was afraid, so he sought the eternal and required all Judah citizens to fast. So this, again, shows you the power of agreement. The king of the nation realizes 
that he needs everybody involved. And so he requires, he puts a decree out among his citizens that everyone, everyone must come into agreement and fast. Everyone gathered together in Jerusalem from cities all over Judah to seek help from the Eternal. Jehoshaphat joined the assembly in the newly restored court at the Eternal's house and prayed before the people. So this is Jehoshaphat praying. O oh, Eternal One, the one true God of our ancestors, you are the true God in the heavens, the ruler over all the kingdoms and nations. You are so strong that none can survive when you oppose. None can survive when they oppose you. O oh, our true God, you demonstrated that power when you exiled inhabitants of this land for your people Israel and gave it to your friend Abraham. And then I'm jumping down to verse 10. Now is the time to ask for your help. Men from Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir are rewarding our ancestors' mercy by coming to steal our inheritance, which is your land, which you gave to us. Our true God, won't you judge them? We can do nothing to stop this huge army from attacking us. We don't know what to do, so we're asking for your help. And then this is Second Chronicles 20, verse 13. And this is another uh, powerful um, picture that we have here of the power of agreement. All Judah, men, women, children, and infants were waiting in front of the Eternal's temple with, when Jehoshaphat asked this. There, the spirit of the Eternal descended on a Levitical singer, Jehaziel, and Jehaziel began to prophesy. And he gave the prophetic word and told them that, you you know, you're not going to have to go out and fight. You just stand there and watch God do what he's going to do. And this is another thing. This doesn't have anything to do with the power of agreement. But this is something that I want to share with you really quickly while we're here because it's pertinent. You know, a lot of times people love to quote that, this scripture right here where it says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. There are times in warfare when you do stand still and let the Lord fight your battle. But there are other times when you actually have to be proactive. And my testimony of when I... um when Zane was delivered is a perfect example. There were times when I could do nothing and all I could do was pray. And then the Lord was working. But then when it came time to actually bringing him out of Egypt, I had to buy a plane ticket, you know, in faith, go down there in faith, um, pick him up in faith, you know, go and, and, you know, take that territory in person by faith in order to get him out of Egypt. So don't just always assume that you stand to do nothing. There are times when the Lord requires you to act. Don't be one of those people like, oh, I don't have to do anything. The Lord's got all of this. It's not always that way. And there's proof of it all over the Bible. Okay. So, um, Jehoshaphat bowed his head low. All the assembly fell prostrate before the eternal and worshiped him with reverence. They trusted the Lord completely. That's another thing about the power of agreement being in one mind, one heart, one soul, one spirit. Both of you, I've said this before. That's one of the steps you have to have the faith. You have to have the faith. That's what trusting and relying on the Lord is. That's what the amplified Bible says that when you trust the Lord, it's, you know, trusting in, believing in and relying on him. You have to be, you know, you have to be one of those people who, you know, that, you know, that, you know, that, you know, that God is going to do what you're asking for. Okay. So then early in the next morning, they went out to the wilderness of Tekoa and, um, Jehoshaphat said, listen to me, Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, trust in the Lord, the eternal one, your God, not in your own abilities, and you will be supported. Put your trust in his words that you heard through the prophets and we will succeed. So that's one of my um, scriptures that's activated for me. Second Chronicles 2020, believe the prophets and you will be successful. My mentor gave that to me when he first started prophesying um, financial wealth into my life. And I was like, you know, how, how's that going to happen? And then he was finally like, well, if you don't believe the words of the prophet, you're not going to get anywhere. You know, the words of the prophet would profit. What they do is they instill hope in you. They're a seed that go down and then you watch over it and bring it to pass. You partner with the Lord to bring it to pass. But second Chronicles 20 is a beautiful picture of the power of agreement. An entire nation got together. And instead of the nation having to actually fight a war physically, all they did was go outside on the battlefield worship. And then the Lord sent a destroying angel to wipe all of their enemies out. Like 185,000 of them got wiped out in one battle and not, they didn't have to lift not one hand to fight. And this is history. This is something that actually took place. All they did was praise and worship and join together in one heart, one soul, one mind, one spirit. And the Lord did that for them. That's the power of agreement. Now look at how big and how awesome the things that can be accomplished if you have corporate agreement. All right. And then another instance of agreement that I wanted to share with you, of course, is in Esther. And this is when um, Haman had sent out, put out the decree that the Jews were going to be attacked. And so uh, Mordecai sent message to Esther and he said, this is what you need to do. OK, so this is what she says in this is Esther chapter four. And I'm reading um, 15. 
Okay, so tell Mordecai in preparation for my audience with the king, do this, gather together all the Jews in Susa and fast and pray for me, intercede for me for three days and nights, abstain from from all food and drink. My maids and I will join you in this time. And after three days, I will go into the king and plead my people's case, even though it means breaking the law. And if I die, I die again. That's a perfect picture, a beautiful picture of corporate agreement. Okay, a magnificent picture of corporate agreement. So. There is power in those numbers and miraculous things come to pass. Nations begin to change all of that stuff. But then again, don't let me discourage you about just finding one other prayer partner to pray with. And, you know, I'm, I'm trying to really encourage you to find one other diligent person because you can do a lot with the two of you. Remember, I said at the very beginning, one puts 1000 to flight, two puts 10,000 to flight. That's a powerful principle. You need to know that. So if you can find one person to diligently pray for, to, I'm sorry, to pray with, you will accomplish great things. But then again, like I shared with you, a lot of times I'm praying by myself and I have major prayer power. And the reason I do that is because I always remind the Lord, you know what? Daniel prayed and fasted diligently for three weeks and you, you, um, decided to fulfill a prophetic word over the nation of Israel because of his prayer, his diligence, his faith. So when I go before the Lord and I'm, you know, by myself in prayer, I remind him of those things. You know, Lord, that's what I'm doing. I am doing what Daniel did. I'm seeking you on my own and I'm expecting, you know, the Holy Spirit to be my person of agreement so that when I'm praying, those things come to pass. You know, and when you, the more you know about the word, about the persons of the Trinity and how they operate, the greater success you're going to have in the spirit realm and the greater success you have in the spiritual realm, it will eventually manifest into the natural realm. Just like I told you when my prayer partner and I were commanding the floodgates of heaven to be opened and the abundance of rain to fall on us, which it was in great measure, it was raining in the natural because things happen in the spiritual first and then they manifest in the natural. That's how things work. You know, we end up affecting, um, natural weather and things that happen in this visible realm, you know, because of our power in prayer. So don't, um, don't miss the, the things that I'm trying to communicate to you. If you have to watch the video over and over, watch the video over and over, but get activated, get the understanding, get the revelation you know, understand what it really means to be in complete agreement with heaven, complete agreement with another person on earth or a complete agreement. If you have a group praying and then go and take territory, change the world, you know, absolutely change the world. Okay. All right. Bye-bye.